Hello everyone, I am Karl Zelinski and today I want to talk about the tracking allocator that comes as part of the Odin programming language. Odin is a manually memory managed language. That means that you allocate memory, but in order to deallocate or free that memory, you will have to do so manually. Many people are afraid of manually memory managed languages because of the potential memory leaks that can happen. Memory leaks being that you essentially forget to free memory and your program is continuously growing in memory usage. So let's first show you a tiny example of a memory leak in this program here. And by the way, this program is part of my uh, video game template and a link to the code of this on GitHub in the description of this video. But in this program, let's write just like some int equals new integer. What this does in Odin is that it uh, allocates this integer uh, on the heap, meaning that it is allocated by the operating system as a separate dynamic allocation. If you now run this, then it starts up. And if you try to close this, then in the uh, console here, it says, on line 110 it leaked 8 bytes and int is then 8 bytes large in Odin and this is on line 110 so this error told us exactly where did the allocation happen and how big is the leaked bytes. So let's have a look at how this tracking allocator stuff is set up then remove that stuff. So here is where my program starts. This is the main proc of my program. Um, and here you see that I create a new tracking allocator. You have to include the mem package that is in the core collection of packages to get to this. And then I initialize it here. So I send in a pointer to the tracking allocator. And what I feed in as the second parameter is here is which allocator should this tracking allocator wrap. So what it essentially does is that it takes, in this case, the default allocator, which is the allocator that sits on the context when your program starts. But it takes that allocator and wraps it. And whenever this tracking allocator is later used, what it will do is that it will, it will do the allocation, but then also record on a big list of allocations, uh, the allocation combined with some metadata of in which file and on which line did this allocation actually happen so that we later can check this list uh, for anything that is still in there because when something else is also deallocated it is also removed from this list. So it essentially is just doing some bookkeeping to make sure that all allocations that happened also have a deallocation happening. So after we have initialized the tracking allocator we set it on the context the context is a thing in Odin that is passed implicitly to all procedures that you call. So all the procedures in the main proc that, well, all the procedure calls in the main proc that happen after this line will use this allocator since it sits on the context. And this is how you um, get uh, an actual allocator you, from your tracking allocator. It sort of puts it into a sort of allocator interface is what this line does. So that's the setup. That's all you need to set it up. What you need to do then is you need to check for um, memory leaks. And in this little template that you can download, like I said, there's a link to that in the, in the description. I have this procedure here called reset tracking allocator. And it is called in two places. This template comes with uh, hot reloading, so it's done in here sometimes when I do a full game reset, but it's also done here uh, when you do a when the game shuts down. And this is probably the most interesting part. So when the game shuts down, it runs reset tracking allocator. And in here, it essentially just loops over the allocation map and prints uh, on value.location, which is the, uh, where the allocation happened it leaked this many bytes and anything in the allocation map that is there when you are for example shutting down the program is something you can consider a memory leak. 
the tracking allocator will also tell you if a bad free has happened. A bad free is when you are trying to deallocate something that is actually not allocated. These bad frees are sometimes called double frees because the most common case when it happens is when you deallocate something, forget to set the pointer to nil or null or zero, and then you at maybe the next frame in a video game try to deallocate the same thing again, which is why it's a double free. So in order to check for bad frees, what you do is, or what I do in this uh, template is that this is a video game, so it has a main loop. So I have a main loop here, and at the end of each uh, iteration of the main loop, I just check, is there anything in the bad free array? In that case, loop over everything in the bad free array and pr please print the bad free. Uh, and this line just waits for me to press a key on the keyboard so I can actually see this in case the, uh, because the thing will just panic here and shut down. And I think it, it's a bit, you know, some people like panicking here and some people like carrying on, but I think bad freeze should always be fixed almost immediately. So I like to just panic and make the program uh, just crash when this happens. So that's that about the tracking allocator. And I would recommend like if you're, for example, like me making a video game, maybe you have a development build of the game. In my case, the game is runs fast enough. So I always had a tracking allocator in my development build and then in, in the release build, I do not have it. Then I just use the default allocators. And I think that the tracking allocator is a great tool for making you comfortable in that you are uh, handling the deallocation of your memory correctly. So it makes it possible for you to focus on the perhaps more interesting part of the development while still harnessing the power of manual memory management. Thanks for watching, have a nice day.